Welcome back to another episode of the Seattle Sports Show where we love Seattle Pro Sports. I'm your host, Mikey, and today we got another seven round Seahawks mock draft for you. Uh, we signed Kayvon Wallace, safety, and nose tackle Jonathan Hankins. Um, Jonathan Hankins, it does affect my look at this draft a little bit because he is a defensive tackle, a nose tackle that has been in the league for 10 years already and has had success uh, throughout his career. And he was most recently with Add and Dirty, our defensive coordinator over in Dallas. So he's going to have familiarity with the coaching staff. He has a long running history of success. Uh, so I assume he's going to be a player that makes this team, uh, you know, when it, when it's time to uh, cut this roster down to a 53-man roster uh, at the end of preseason. There's a lot of uh, players that they are that they have agreements with right now that I assume might not make this roster. A lot of, you know, veteran minimum deals that have been signed or agreed to that, you know, they are uh, players who are just coming off rookie contracts or, um, yeah, a, a, a lot of those where a lot of them have not shown like continued years of success. A lot of them are coming off their most successful year, but it took them a while to have a successful year. So there's no track record to show that they can be consistent and that they can do it over a long period of time. Like Jonathan Hankins has. So uh, it, it will affect my look at the defensive tackle position. Um, you know, whether I how bad I want to take one if I take one at all. But but then also, if there's, you know, some of the top ones still available to us at 16, uh, it, it makes it that much easier for me to trade off of uh, at that point because, again, the amount of resources you have poured into it already and the players you have, it, it would just be one of those ones where you're willing to sacrifice, uh, you know, a, a player at that point you know, getting a player at that position so that you can get more value throughout the draft and uh, get high quality players of other positions of need. So we're going to go into this mock with that in mind. Don't know if it's going to really play out for us, uh, play out that way for us, but uh, we're going to find out what happens here at pick 16. Uh, we only got one trade offer. It is with Carolina going uh, trading back all the way out of the first round into the first pick of the second round, pick 33, and their pick 39. I don't know if I really truly like that offer and if I would want the Seahawks to do that, but it's the only one I have in this simulator. And if we're just thinking of the idea that John Schneider does not want to overdraft and overpay guard position let's play let's play this scenario out because we have not done that yet and again i think this is mock number 16 for us and we have not done any of these the same way we haven't done the same mock twice uh and again i'm really uh you know that's something i am glad to be doing because i want to play out a bunch of different scenarios and see uh, how that would affect uh, how we look at the draft overall and what we would want the Seahawks to do. So let's play out the scenario and see if it's something that could actually be beneficial to the Seahawks and if, it, if it's something that we would like. like I, said, I don't know if I'd really want them to do this, but if it came to draft day and it was the only thing that they had on the table and they decided to do it, let's find out if we would think it was a good idea in the long run or if it was a mistake. Uh, now we do got a couple more trade offers that came to the table. Uh, New England really wants somebody because they want to just move up one spot with a swap 33 and 34 and then also give us their pick 193. Now Houston, interesting, they want to swap 33 
and 42. So we'd be moving back in the second round, but then we would also trade our 102 and swap with them for their pick 59. So we'd take that fourth round pick and get it up into the second round. Uh, it's intriguing. Uh, New England's also intriguing because I think obviously if Houston still really wants somebody unless New England's about to take them uh, at pick 33 maybe Houston will still come to us uh, with that it's kind of odd because you know in reality uh, you know the Seahawks organization is going to know who New England is we're, the, we're likely going to know because it's going to be part of the conversation, right? That New England is going to want to trade with us and they're probably going to be, you know, we're going to want to know who are they going to take. And then we're going to want to know if Houston's calling us at the same time and wanting to make a trade, we're going to be confirming with them like, well, who, who, who are you trying to take here? And then we could play that off uh, of, okay, let's, let's trade with New England pick up that 193 and then uh maybe uh you know if we know they're not taking the player that houston wants then we can call houston back up when we have 34 and say hey do you still want to make that trade your player is still available uh still want to make that trade because we have the next pick now as well if we knew that was how that was happening right here that would be great but we don't but I'm going to test it out and see if that's what happens. So we're going to swap 33 for 34 with New England and 193 and hope that the simulator is hoping, uh, you know, is going to make Houston still want to trade with us. Let's find out. Nope, that's not how it worked out. But that's, you know, that's that's what's dealing with the, the simulator is like. Okay, so uh, the other trade offers on here. I'm not going to accept because they're moving way too far back in the second round. And then the other one was um, offering more picks for next year. And again, I'm just playing these scenarios out to pick players in this year draft and see how this draft is effective. So that, you know, that's, that's how I've been playing these out. But here we are at pick 34. And if, if I'm at 34 and uh, Graham Barton is still available... Then uh, that's who we're taking with our our first pick at at thirty four. Uh, again, cause, because we made that trade uh, with Carolina, we have pick thirty nine now as well. And uh, let's see, we got a couple trade offers. Uh, Okay, I might be interested in this one, but let me see who all is available. So I make sure I'm really not missing out on somebody I want. For sure. Okay. We're going to test this one out too. So now we're taking that 39 pick. <laughs> we're going to trade even farther back. We're swapping our 39 for New York Giants 47. And then we're taking our pick 118, the fourth round pick, and moving that to pick number 70. So getting all the way back towards the top of the third round. So let's do that and let's see. Okay. And okay, with the rest of these, we don't want to go with those offers. So now we're at pick 47. Okay. And then. With 47 here, I'm just looking around to see, okay, well, again, so now this, this is going to be the one that's so far looking closest to uh, another draft that we've done, I believe. Again, none of these have ever worked out exactly the same. Uh, but I think I will because we've already got a few backups signed for guard positions and people competing at guard positions. And we just drafted the guy that we think is going to start over there at left guard. Um, 
you know, at, at this point, we want to get a guy that we think is going to compete for starting linebacker, right? So we will get Edron Cooper. All right. And then, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going to make a trade again based off uh, who's available in the draft uh, that I can see at the top of the board right now. We're just going to swap 70 with New York Jets, 72. And then again, uh, 2025 fourth round pick, ours, for the Jets pick 134 uh, in this year. So that gives uh, a chance to draft another player in this year's draft. Uh, okay, well... I'm I, I'm gonna have a hard time passing up some players here, so I am going to stick at 72 because we have so many more picks in the middle rounds now where we can still get value. This is definitely not a need, but I have been getting comments and people saying like, "Hey, but." You know, do we really want to stick? You know, that they, they can easily still cut um, D. Eskridge, and it'll cost him nothing. They restructured his deal, uh, we know, so that he took a little bit less cap hit, but they could still cut him totally if they want to, and, and uh, it'll co cost them nothing to do. And, you know, here we are at pick 72. We've already gotten two major needs taken care of. And if you want to get another receiver for the future you're saying hey uh tyler luckett really is on his way out now um uh the eskridge thanks but see you later you really haven't done anything for us and we have the opportunity here to take xavier leggett wide receiver out of south carolina i don't know if they have his numbers in here um let's look in the simulator what they have they yeah they sh they have his uh, stuff in here again uh, a six foot three 227 uh pound guy so they even compare him to dk <laughs> uh metcalf in their little uh blurb that they have about him in the simulator so again if, if we're looking at uh weapons going forward in the future um then just think of that receiving core going forward. I mean, how could you pass it up? You might as well take it there. Okay, and now here we are at pick 81. Okay, and for me, I, I'm looking at this and I am saying uh, I, like a, a, I like a player here uh, also that I don't want to uh, pass up. Uh, I am looking at safety bro, uh, Bo Braid out of Maryland. If I can get him here at pick 81, then again, we're getting uh, a really good uh, value pick there. And uh, again, a lot of the safeties that they've been bringing in short, either you know two-year deal or one-year deal, they're, they're definitely not deals that make you say, okay, they can't bring in somebody to compete for that position. So here we get Maryland's bow braid. We're at pick 102 for our next pick. And uh you know at at at, at this spot right here uh you know I I think everybody uh knows that uh Zach Center is going to go earlier than what they have in the mock um yeah and i i wouldn't want to miss out on him either and uh it, it fills a need and again you're going to have enough people competing for starting jobs and backups uh, at that point when you take that pick so uh I, I i'm happy with doing that there at that spot and now at pick 134 We've addressed offensive line. We got a 
a linebacker, we got a receiver, we got a safety. Oh, okay. Well, we still got another linebacker that, uh, let's see, just to make sure there's not somebody else that I just happen to like more. Uh, ooh, 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 ooh. I like Tyrese Knight out of UTEP. That's ranked down there a little bit lower. But Jalen Ford is also still here. I uh, pick 134 out of Texas. So that's the linebacker that we're going to go with uh, in this uh, simulation. Maybe we'll take Tyrese Knight. will be somebody that we take in future ones. Just keep that name in mind. But in this one, we're taking Jalen Ford here. Uh, is ranked higher. So... Uh, Let's go with that. And then 179 here. Uh, for this one, okay, well, we're at, we're at pick 179. We've gotten, I've only, I've picked up, okay, I've picked up two linebackers. Um, picked up a safety cards wide receiver even uh let's see for where we are in the draft you know we're talking about being at the end and this i really like defensive backs in general that come out of Oregon. They have, uh, they don't even have stats on here. They have a, quite a lot of success at the NFL level. That seems to be something that uh, Oregon is very good at producing. seems like they're very good at producing uh, defensive backs, uh, uh, you know, and then you see them quite, uh, often have success uh, with defensive linemen and offensive linemen. So if we can get somebody like a Evan Williams uh, at this point in the draft, and we're, we're getting a lot of luxury points uh, or luxury picks at this point, um, you know, because not everybody's going to make the team uh, at this point, but you got to get guys in here to compete um, for starting jobs and for special teams jobs. So we're going to take somebody like a Evan Williams in this one. Uh, and then we're at pick 192. Uh, you know, one of the, my favorite guys that we've been taking for, you know, actual, just like straight up receiving threat, uh, tight end Tanner, uh, McLaughlin, uh, available. And then, uh, our next pick is 193. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's take somebody. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, all right. I'm just kind of scrolling through and looking at uh, all the different players available. Okay, let's, I mean, we're talking about we're at the end of the draft here. Let's get somebody to come in and... Uh, compete uh for uh you know edge and to me there's a couple of players uh to look at here where do they have them they moved Gabriel Mur murphy all the way down to 250 so well i i guess uh, in this one, let's go ahead. Let's take, uh, <coughs> let's take Miles Cole, edge out of Texas Tech. Uh, get get more bodies in there competing for the defensive line because we we're getting a lot of players in this draft with the trades we've made. And then here at uh, our pick two thirty five, let's get. <laughs> Okay, yeah, let's, uh, you know, I'm just, 
looking around here and we got Cooper, we got Ford. Let's let's fill out some more of that um more of that linebacker room and get Darius uh Mugasau. Okay? So we make sure that we have enough people competing and uh you know, enough people even competing for backup positions. All right, so filling out and completing this mock draft uh, at the top, traded back. We got Graham Barton, guard out of Duke. Then Edrin Cooper, linebacker out of Texas. And again, because uh, the the value was just there, um, where he was falling to us, we took Xavier Leggett at 72. And, uh, you know, again, that just freezes up to really just move on from the D. Eskridge um, project while getting some, like a big stud athlete that we think, um, you know, could be, uh, you know, a, a big part of the future with, uh, you know, while getting rid of a project that was a failed project and thinking about, uh, a, you know, a player like a Tyler Lockett who is going to be uh, retiring soon. Uh, still wanted to get a top quality safety, uh, so we went with Bo Braid out of Maryland at 81. Zach Zinter needed, still needed to get uh, a top type of guard, uh, so we took him at 102. Jalen Ford, linebacker, got to get more competition in there. Uh, Evan Williams, safety out of Oregon. Again, like those defensive backs out of Oregon. Um, again, somebody who can, uh, you know, I would think uh, thrive in a Mike McDonald type of system. Uh, again, we've taken a minute. This is one player that we've taken a ton. Tanner McLaughlin from Arizona. Uh, uh, Edge, Miles Cole, some more competition. Uh, Darius Muasau again, linebacker competition at the end of the at the end of the draft here. So there you go. There is our latest mock draft. Let me know what you thought of this one. How would you grade it? Uh, if if this is how it played out, uh, I think this one is very different from what what we went with just by taking a receiver in a middle round here. That kind of uh, you know affected the way we ended up uh, looking at uh, linebacker, right? So we got the one top linebacker, but now uh, that kind of sacrifice getting some other linebackers that I really like throughout the rest of that, um, you know, second round and third round range. Uh, so we then we didn't get one till like the fourth round there. Right, that's how that math works out. Is that fourth round at 134? Is that fifth? Top of fifth. Something close to that. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, still still a linebacker that you like, though, to, uh, you know, somebody that you still like to make the team. So, yeah, that that's kind of how much, you know, switching up that position in the third round there kind of affected the way that this uh, simulation played out. So let me know if you like that and if that is a sacrifice that you would be willing to make and that you would want to see the Seahawks make. If you say, hey, you know, maybe there they could have got somebody like, uh, uh, we know Junior Colson wasn't available because I looked, uh, but, you know, was, uh, you, know, uh, you know, a Tyron Hopper available, um, you know, uh, was Jeremiah Trotter Jr., still available i i didn't look that closely but if they were um you know is that a you know a sacrifice would that yeah, you'd be willing to make to say well we're getting again a stud receiver close to a dk metcalf type that um just because of this year's draft is you know gonna fall farther down the draft because there's just so much talent at the position you know is is that worth the sacrifice uh, of one of those other middle ground linebackers?
Let me know what you think of how that played out and uh, give me those grades, A, B, C, D, F. Um, let's see. Uh, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, the notification bell. And then, of course, if you are listening to a podcast version of the Seattle Sports Show uh, on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, then uh, hit the follow button or subscribe and leave those five-star ratings and written reviews because it helps out the show. Okay, and uh, thanks for listening to the Seattle Sports Show where we watch Legends Awaken. So take cover because with a CF sound, you will see us rise to reign supreme and win forever.